how can you get better at proofs right now? Like right now, there's actually something you can do and I do this every time I write a proof and it will make you better at proofs pretty much immediately. Like it will make you understand things better. It will clarify your ideas. It'll, it'll just make you better. So here's the thing. After you write your proof, so once you figure it out and you prove it, and you know it's correct, that's a big one. A lot of times people will prove things and they'll think it's correct. And this is, this is tough. It's hard to know, you know when your proofs are correct. You know, the best way to know if your proof is correct is to have someone look at it for you. And that's hard. It's hard to find someone who's gonna sit there and go through your proof. I mean, if you have a teacher, do it. You know, go see your teacher and ask them to look at your proof. But if you don't, the next best thing is to find a proof on the internet or in a book and then compare it to yours and then make sure your proof follows the same exact logical steps. So once you know that your proof is correct, here's what you can do to get better at proof writing. You go through your proof and you really think about every step, okay? You try to think about the structure of the proof. Look at your hypothesis, where you started your proof. You started with your hypothesis, your assumption. So like if you're doing like an if-then proof, you know, analyze that part. And then think about what your next step was. After you wrote down your hypothesis, what was your next step? You know, did you use the definition of your hypothesis? A lot of times that's the case. A lot of times you'll start a proof by saying, you know, I'll just make something up. You know, suppose, suppose X is a BVD, whatever a BVD is, I'm making it up. So suppose X is a BVD. Then you write down what a BVD is, right? So a lot of times it's all you do. Maybe you had to use the definition more than once. So just really, really sit down and analyze your proofs. And I find that if I don't tell myself to do this, I won't do it. And you might not be doing it either. Maybe you haven't. If you haven't, start doing it. And I think the reason is, it takes a lot of work to write a proof and figure out a proof. So once you figure it out and, and you know it's correct and you turn it in for a homework assignment or whatever and you get it back and it's correct, you put it away and it goes in a folder and you never look at it again, right? That's not how it works. The best way to get really good at proof writing is to really reflect on your work and think about every single step. This is not my idea. Right, this is not my idea. I got this from, from a professor who passed away. He was semi-famous, um, and I was fortunate to take his class. Same thing with induction proofs too, you know? Like, if you're doing an induction proof, always go back to the part where you use the induction hypothesis and just analyze that part. And he would say, in that step of the proof, ask yourself, what happens if you don't have the induction hypothesis? Why doesn't it work? Then think, okay, can I make it work without the hypothesis? You won't be able to, right? You won't. Because you need the induction hypothesis. And he would always say that that was the beautiful thing about the induction proofs is that if you try to take away that step, uh, like it just, it just falls apart. Analyze why it falls apart, right? Really, really, really good stuff. So I just wanted to make this, this, this short video and just talk about that because I think, I remember his words, you know, uh, you know, reflect on your proofs and just really, really, uh, really deep. When you really start looking at proofs and the structure of proofs, you start to notice patterns and you start to notice similarities. And so by, by doing this reflection, you can employ those strategies into future proofs. For example, whenever you have a finite set, you can always take the maximum of that set. That is a reoccurring theme in mathematics, right? If you have a finite set, you can take the maximum of that set. For example, in real analysis, when you're trying to prove a convergent sequence is bounded, every convergent sequence is bounded, that proof relies on that, right? There are several proofs in topology that also rely on that, on taking you know, the maximum of, of a set. So, Little things like that, these, these reoccurring ideas come up again and again. So really, you know, sit down and just go line by line and just reflect on the proof. Can it be written a different way? Sometimes you can prove it a different way. Can you prove it via contrapositive? What about a proof by contradiction, you know? Can you prove a stronger statement, 
right? Is there, is there something stronger? Can you prove something even stronger than what you just proven? And again, a lot of times I think that, you know, we, we don't do that because we have time constraints, right? There's, there's, only, there's only 24 hours in a day. I, I, wish, I wish the guy who taught me this could, could watch this video, but he, he, you know, he passed away uh, several years ago. But uh, yeah, really great mathematician and, and, and really great words, right? Reflect on the proof, really, really deep stuff. Good luck.